Hi everybody, I'm Kevin and this is PrintZone123. Today I'm going to be giving a tutorial for Cura and I'm going to be talking about the basic tab in Cura and what all of the settings mean and how they will affect your print and what uh, typical values are for most printers. So as you can see here I have Cura open and I have a model on the build plate. This is the OK hand. Um, I've scaled it down just uh, just so that it's easier to see. So right now the print time is actually only 30 minutes for this print. So starting with the quality of the print um, in this first section. So the first option you have is for your layer height in millimeters. Um, typically a value of anywhere from 0.1 to 0.2 is uh, pretty common. Um, Obviously, if you have a smaller layer height, you're going to have more layers and the print time will be longer, but the benefit of that is that you're going to have a much higher quality print. Um, so we can see here, if we change the layer height from 0.2 to 0.1 and we let this model uh, reload, we'll see the print time is going to go up, um, but again, you have that added benefit of uh, you know increased quality and you can see here we went for you know basically doubled our print time by having um, twice as many layers um, one thing to point out is if you hover over any of these boxes Cura has a nice little description of each um, each setting and what it means um, so that's another way to kinda help you figure out how you wanna set your printer this next option is for your shell thickness. So if I go to your my view mode and I go to layers, um, this will help explain it. So right now we have you know 388 layers, and I'm going to go all the way down to the first layer and zoom in here. So the red and the green line represent our shells. So we have two shells, and the way you can figure that out is you have your shell thickness of 0.8 and in my case my nozzle size down here is 0.4 so essentially we have two shells if you take 0.4 times 2 we get a shell thickness of 0.8 so this red uh, line here is representing the outer shell and then the green one is our second inner shell um, having two shells that that's pretty common um, just to, to have a you know a model that's relatively sturdy um, you can decrease down to one and you're gonna have a less sturdy model and you could add um, even more shells if you really need a tough model um, this next setting is enable retraction so what that means is essentially when you have a print and let's say you have the nozzle needs to move all the way from this part of the bed all the way to you know all the way across the bed to the other end so what you may um, see is if you don't have enable retraction checked, you're going to get oozing so that as the nozzle moves across the build plate, you're going to actually ooze some of the filament onto your print. And you know this could ruin your print. So typically you want to have this enable retraction, you want that checked. And in, uh, in the advanced video I'm going to be talking about, this tab here and I'll talk a little bit more about retraction and some of the settings you can um, mess around with. So as for fill, so your bottom and top thickness, so right now this is set to 0.8 and since my layer height is 0.1 that means I'm going to get eight layers of solid fill. So you can see here this first layer is completely filled in and if we scroll up a little bit to let's say five again we're completely filling this layer in so once we get past our eighth layer we're gonna start seeing that it's gonna have our infill showing in so that's basically what this means so the top eight layers in this example will be completely filled in as well as the bottom eight layers so here's our fill density so these yellow lines inside the part are representing our fill density and typically 
Um, for parts that aren't going to be bearing any load, usually 10 is all you need. And, you know, you can go higher, but at that point, you're really just wasting filament. Um, but let's set it to 20 just as an example to see what happens to our model. But basically what we should see is that our grid is going to get a little bit more fine and we're going to have some additional material inside of our part. So moving on to speed and temperature. So I, I like to have a print speed around 45. Um, higher print speeds means your part will print faster but the expense is that you're going to you know, reduce your quality uh, a bit. Um, so usually I like to stay below 50, um, but again, it depends on, you know, your personal preference for that. Printing temperature. So for PLA, usually 210 degrees Celsius is good. That what's, That's what seems to work for me. Um, and I like to keep the bed temperature at 70 degrees. And this kind of helps to ensure that when you're printing your part that uh, the first layer will stick well to the bed. Um, if you don't have a heated bed then this setting um, doesn't really pertain to you. As for supports, so there are two different types of supports you can have. Well really three. So the first type is no supports. So if your structure doesn't need any supports then just select none. Um, and in this example, this part doesn't really need supports, but I'll talk about them anyways. So if you select touching the build plate, what that's going to do is anywhere where your model needs supports that are accessible from the build plate, um, Cura will add supports that will build from the build plate up and touch your part. If you select everywhere, it will also allow Cura to add supports. For example, let's say we wanted, we want supports from here to here, and this is a tough area to, to build right here on this index finger. Then Cura may add supports if you click everywhere to, um, to bridge that gap there. So this is something that is dependent on your model, and the best way to test if you really need supports or not is to go into your view modes, go into layers, and you can go layer by layer and see whether or not you think su supports are appropriate for your model. For platform adhesion type, so again you could select none. The other two options are brim and raft. Um, if you go on the Ultimaker website they have a good explanation of what these are, but I'll do my best to kind of explain them. So. Brim is going to give you a, uh, a few layers surrounding your print. It will not elevate your print, it will just add them to the first layer. To um, This helps to promote having your print actually stick to the, to the uh, platform on the, on the first layer. Um, Raft will actually build an entire uh, platform to build your part on. So, um, depending on your model, you may or may not need platform adhesion. Filament, this is dependent on whatever type of filament you have. Typically, uh, most printers or nozzles will accept 1.75 millimeter filament, but that's something you can just look at um, the specs of your filament to know what to input here. And flow, you could just leave that 100. That's just saying that you always want to be flowing the, the full amount while you're printing. Um, again, this is something that you should know. It's it's the nozzle size of your printer. So make sure that you input that there. And again, your shell thickness should be a multiple of whatever your nozzle size is. So I hope that this video is useful to you and, and, it, and you can get some benefit out of it. Um, I'm going to be going over in my next video the advanced tab and what some of these features are so make sure to check that out as well um, if you haven't done so already please subscribe to my youtube channel and i'm going to be going over uh, other tutorial videos in youtube and i also have a lot of time lapse videos showing some of my prints um, in a reduced fashion so you get to see a, 
uh, 3D printed object in you know a minute or so. Um, and if you have any feedback or comments, please make sure to put those in the comments section and hit the like button if you like this video.